What's that? Your champion, Lakey Peterson. I'm Lakey, and this is my vlog. We're going to Tahiti tonight. I'm just practicing my bill. <laughs> Britt just shaped me these boards <clears throat> for specifically for Tahiti. I know he's been making a ton of them for um, a lot of the guys in Indo. And uh, they're pretty much made for getting barreled and paddling fast. Which is apparently what you need at Chofu. The, the weight distribution on this board is way different than my normal board. This is like a normal 510 that I would ride whenever I need a 510. Versus this board, which is a 510, but if you put them side by side, you can see well, you might not be able to see in that video, but it's like pretty much all the foam in the board is from halfway forward. That's where all the volume in the board is. And then this just comes in really tight. So you have like really good entry speed and good paddle power and it gets you down the face of the wave fast. And then my normal board is more the volume spread out throughout the entire surfboard. Um, it's not so much all forward. Tahiti, I'm looking forward. I've never been to Tahiti. Um, so there's that. I'm just looking forward to getting there and seeing it because it looks beautiful. But surfing Chopu for sure. It's going to be on tour next year. And I want to do well at the event. And so I'm going to go learn how to tube ride. I think backside tube riding is probably one of the hardest things for me to learn at this point. I really struggle with it. So um, the goal of this trip and the purpose of it is to get comfortable at Chopu and just understand that wave a little bit and then learn how to backside barrel ride a lot better than what I currently can. So these are the tools that are going to get me there. I was watching that Chopu dock. Mike was in it. I didn't tell him to go one. Pretty interesting. It made me more nervous. So it's bad. But it's all code red swells. So we're going on like a nice code blue swell. Get the boat to go surf. See the whole pool. It's uh, my man. Brightness, volume, fine tuning, channel selection. On off. You can tune either with the remote unit from your easy chair or use the push button panel in the cabinet. <laughs> First day, which was <laughs> interesting. No, actually, it was pumping. It was going off at the And uh, I went over the falls. But it was good, it was progress. So, this wave is scary. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it is like a slap. That is, that is it. It's actually, it is. It's a perfect slap. What was your thoughts of day one at Chopu, babe? You can be like another 20 feet deeper than what you think you can be. 
it's like you watch the locals and they all paddle in so freaking deep at any other wave you'd be like well i'm never gonna make this but they're so open and they push through with so much force that you actually make them and if you're taking off in the spot that you think is right a lot of the time you see a stay barely getting barrel yeah your brain tells you like don't go deeper don't go deeper don't go deeper but then you have to be deeper otherwise you just a coop in front of the tube the you can't even see the wave and then all of a sudden the waves about to break on your head and it's pretty challenging it's pretty scary i won't lie i'm pretty intimidated by the wave but that's why we're here there was like some south peaks and some west poles so I was just learning the best waves to go on um, for when we have a heat out here next year and managed to get a good one in the end. So I was stoked. Got it. She's not the best on the bike. I'm so, but give me on, keep me on a board. Don't pour a bat in a ball, but right? Go into the store. Good. Here we are. That's the big Chopu sign. There's Tom. It's cool to see a place, a place in the world that hasn't been fully developed and they're fighting so hard for it to not be developed. We just did our little shopping run. The baguette is about to fall out of the basket. This is the road to get to the store. Tom's eating chips. We're going for a little hike to the waterfall and to see horses. And it's beautiful. Your stallion. These are our little oh. horse friends. Ridiculous valley. We just came to check out this little waterfall. We're gonna hike in there. We're in the middle of like dense, dense forest. What do you think, babe? So cool, so hidden under everything. We're improving. We're improving in a big way. We're getting, we're starting to figure out the tube ride. So now it's just about going deeper.
We're here in Tahiti. This is Tahari. We're staying at his place, Tahari Homestay. He's gonna teach us how to make the most local Tahitian. Poisson cru, called Poisson cru, coconut raw fish. As a first start, you need to choose the right coconut. If you hear water inside, then it's the one. You hear yours? It's a good, good one. one. Step two, you're gonna have to take out the shell of the coconut and then go like that. A little bit more. Oh, yo. <laughs> more. <laughs> you got this, perfect. <laughs> We'd be going hungry back. Oh, we would not survive in an island. Hey. And when you hit, you gotta hit it hard. Hit it again. And then... Everything's strong, like... Like this, like this. Bah! Yeah. Shit, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh, again, one more. Again. Yeah? One more. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. Don't force it too much. Yep. No? Like that you see? smushy. Yep. Because I went too hard. It yep. So we got fresh coconut milk pressed uh, from this morning. Uh, we got cucumbers. We got tomatoes. We got red onions. We got lime. Green onions just to top the whole thing. And the fish. Fresh fish. So we're pouring fresh coconut milk. And uh, yeah, this whole plate is for you, Lakey. <laughs> I'm gonna sink to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. So that is Poisson Cru, made by Lakey and myself. <laughs> With a little bit of help from Tom. Tama Amaite, like we say in Tahiti. Enjoy your meal. Yeah, guys. Woo! <laughs> There's our crew. These guys are legends. <laughs> <laughs> What sort of whales are they? Humbug, humbug whales. Yeah. questions for this week's vlog and my first one is from Joanna Patterson. She asked what board I was riding in the previous vlog in the contest at Oceanside. I was riding a Channel Islands Brit Merrick shaped 58 Rook 15 model and it was very old foam. The next question was from Isabella B. She asked me how young you think you need to start surfing to go pro. It's kind of a tough question. Um, it's pretty individual. For me, I learned to surf originally when I was about five years old, but I didn't really start competing until I was 12, which is quite a bit later than most of the girls I surf against now on the tour. So I would say it's never too late to start, but to be on the professional circuit, I think you need to probably start around at least 10 years old um, and be competing by then. 